Hey guys, Jessica here with the Pet Parenting Reset, and today we are talking about hot spots. So they're actually pretty rare to happen on a cat, but fairly common on dogs. I know Kim had one many, many years ago, um, and our previous dogs, Claire had a couple of them over time. It, they're, they're not pleasant. So we're gonna talk about how to handle them when your dog does get one and why it's so important to treat the underlying cause of a hotspot. So you may have heard the term hotspot and you're not really sure what it is or you've even, like your dog has had some and you realize what they look like but you still aren't really sure what it is and how they come about. And that's perfectly understandable because a lot of times they just seem to come out of nowhere. And that can be very true. Sometimes you can go to work in the morning and your dog is perfectly fine. And by the time you get home in the afternoon, they are obsessively licking and itching and scratching and biting at this one tiny little spot on their body that we know as a hot spot. So really a hot spot, and, and that's you know a lay person term, a hot spot, is an itchy inflamed area of skin that your dog obsessively licks at, bites at, scratches at. Really, unfortunately, these spots on our dogs are sore and they hurt. They just, they are very unpleasant for your dog to have and very sensitive to the touch. So even though they are licking and biting and scratching, it's, it hurts them when they do it. But it hurts so much that they don't know what else to do, so they just keep itching and licking and biting and scratching. So your vet may call this a couple of different things. Uh, one term, medical term, is pyotraumatic dermatitis. Uh, possibly they could call it acute moist dermatitis or even superficial pyoderma. Now, my vet, I, I very vividly remember, don't ask me why, because it was many years ago, she called it pyoderma. And I was like, okay, that term is way over my head. Let's just make my dog feel better, right? And here's the thing, triggering a hot spot, I mean, th the sky is the limit, right? It could be flea bites. It could be seasonal allergies. It could be something else in the environment that's causing your dog to itch or scratch. What's really interesting is that sometimes the, now we all live with bacteria on our body and your dog is no different. Uh, there's good bacteria, there's bad bacteria. As long as there is you know, a harmony and a balance to that bacteria, everything is hunky-dory. But sometimes the bacteria on your dog's skin can actually be, become overrun and cause a hot spot to happen. What's really important to know is when the bacteria on your dog's skin causes an infection, like a hot spot, we absolutely 100% need to look for the root cause while we treat the hot spot. Now, we always need to look for the root cause, don't get me wrong, but it is especially important in this case. So what do we do to treat a hot spot on our dog? So a lot of times, and I've been this person that I just immediately go to the vet. And you know what? If that is you, go ahead, go to the vet and let your vet treat the hot spot because they're gonna do all the things and they're gonna set you up. Now, if you wanna go ahead and start treating, this is absolutely something that you can start treatment for at home. Now, if this is something that just keeps happening, if this is a recurring problem, then of course, you know, we're probably not treating the underlying issue and you do wanna to get to your veterinarian. But let's talk about at-home treatment for a hot spot. The very first thing you wanna do, and this can be a little daunting, but it is absolutely necessary, is get, shave the hair in around on <laughs> the hot spot area. The reason why this is so important is because the hair can get into the, you know, the, all the oozy pus coming out of the hot spot, and it will mat down. And bacteria, and then it's just a hotbed zone, right, for bacteria to continue to breed and breed and breed. And the hot spot is just going to get worse. So we need to get the hair away from that area, and the best way to do that is to shave the area. Now, again, you, if you need to go to your veterinarian to get this done, absolutely do it. When we shave the hair and get it away from the hot spot area, it can also be very helpful to mark the area. Um, Dr. Becker actually recommends using a Sharpie type marker to go outside, just outside of the hot spot area and kind of do a light little circle around it so that you can tell very easily if it's spreading because if it's spreading, then we definitely need to get to a veterinarian right away. Because if it's spreading, then we're not doing a good job of containing it and managing it and your dog is going to need more supportive care. 
Now, once we get the area shaved, we need to get it cleaned up. Okay, the second step is going to be to disinfect the wound. The best way to do this is with povidone iodine. The brand name is Betadine. So what you wanna do is take the povidone iodine and dilute it with purified water until it is the color of tea. Like when you brew tea at home, you know, that kind of, I don't know, very, very light, light, light brown uh, color that you get. That's what you wanna see when you dilute the povidone iodine. Now, with this, this is a, a disinfectant, it's organic, it's completely natural. Uh, what we wanna do is make sure, because in the first couple of days especially, this hot spot is gonna be oozing a lot. We wanna keep it clean and dry. So Dr. Becker recommends up to every two hours you could do this cleaning regimen and keeping it dry, but at a very, very minimum, twice a day. So the third step in this whole process is going to be to soothe the wound. And there are a few different things you can use to help soothe the wound. My favorite is gonna be either raw aloe or manuka honey. So you're gonna to wanna to repeat the disinfecting process, which is the betadine or the povidone iodine, and then the soothing process, which is gonna be either your raw aloe or your manuka honey often for the especially for the first few days but very often until you start to see the wound actually shrink in size of course we want to see the infection clear so you're going to see that bright red or pink skin turn a lighter color because the infection is going away and your dog is no longer going to be obsessing over the hot spot the fourth step is to protect the wound because of course we're, we're doing all of this we don't want our dog to just go right back to biting and scratching at it so Unfortunately, we may need to put an e-collar on our dog and that, that just is what it is, right? We need to keep our dog from licking it, from biting it, from scratching at it. So keeping it dry, keeping it soothed, and also protecting it so that your dog can't continue to bite and lick at it. You could apply a light wrap to it, but again, we wanna to try to keep it as dry as possible outside of the soothing treatments that we're giving it. So. You know, you want to make sure that you're not just wrapping up a ton of moisture into it. So it would be a very light wrapping if you did that. Uh, possibly putting a t-shirt on your dog if they are willing to accept wearing a t-shirt. Not all dogs are willing to accept that. More than likely you're going to wind up with that either inflatable collar or the, the cone, right? Because we need to make sure our dog isn't continually scratching and biting and licking at it. So as I told you in the beginning, we need to also, as we're going through this process, we need to treat the underlying cause because we don't want these hot spots to just keep happening, right? They're very painful, very uncomfortable for our dog. There are lots of things that could be causing these hot spots. The first being a food sensitivity. These are actually really, really common in dogs these days. So you may wanna talk with a pet nutritionist, a dog nutritionist specifically about uh, doing testing to figure out what your dog is allergic to or um, possibly even going ahead and doing an elimination diet to find out what ingredient uh, or ingredients are causing these food sensitivities, possibly even allergies to your dog. And then we want to create a meal plan, preferably fresh food that does not include these foods that your dog is sensitive to. It could be an environmental allergy, ragweed, grass, dust mites, all the things, molds, these are all typical and known allergens in the environment, not just for you, but also for our pets. So you will want to make sure that you are seeking out all sources of allergens in the environment as well and getting rid of them. This may mean that you're getting an air purifier in your home, that you're vacuuming multiple multiple times a week. I know people that vacuum multiple times a day. Uh, it just depends on the environment you live in and what you need to do to keep you and your family healthy. Um, flea allergy dermatitis is another really, really big one. So we know that fleas are pests and we don't want them, but even one tiny little bite from a flea can really cause havoc to a dog's system, especially if they develop an allergic response to that flea saliva. And that is, it's not uncommon guys. So even if you don't have fleas in your house and you're not, you know, you, you don't have an infestation, fleas still live out in the world. And if your dog is outside and gets bit by a flea, even not bringing fleas in the house, which is great, but that flea bite can still lead to 
really, really nasty um, allergies and itchy skin and hot spots. Of course, we can't forget about physical issues and even emotional issues that could be causing these hot spots. So for example, a dog, an older dog possibly, who has gone all their life and never had a hot spot and all of a sudden, um, you know, you're noticing hot spots maybe on a joint, right? If your dog is also having issues with arthritis, which your veterinarian can help you identify if you are not aware of it yet. A lot of times we are very hyper aware of situations like that with our pets, right? Um, that could actually be a result of the inflammation and the arthritis in the body presenting itself outwardly. Um, so, you know, we need to take all of these things into account. There are also, you know, anxiety and emotional issues that, behavioral issues such as compulsive disorders that our dogs can be going through because you know they need as much mental and emotional support as physical support and we often overlook that and that could lead to excessive biting excessive licking just i mean boredom alone can lead to excessive licking so there are so many things that we really want to take into account when we are trying to figure out why these hot spots are happening especially you know if, if one happens and then you don't see another one for years and years and years and maybe never you know it, it is what it is they happen sometimes right but especially if we're seeing multiples um many a month many in a year we want to you know, put our heads together with our veterinarian and figure out the underlying cause because they are very painful and they there is an underlying cause. Getting to the root of it is gonna be really, really important. So I hope this video is helpful. I hope it helps you, especially if your dog is currently suffering from a hot spot. Please know I'm sending all of my love to you and your dog um, to get through it <laughs> together because it's not an easy thing to overcome. They are very sore, they're very painful. So with that, thank you so much for being here. I do hope you liked the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you do. If you learned anything, if it's helping you, give it a thumbs up and also make sure you are subscribed and following along. With that, I'm gonna end this video. Please give extra love to your pets from me today. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.